seven o'clock. Let's get the party started. Good evening, folks. Welcome to the West Rockville Township Board of Supervisors meeting of 16 June 2021. <clears throat> For those new to our meetings, I'm David Collingwood, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors. I'm joined by fellow supervisors, Mr. Jim Miller, Vice Chair, and member Mr. Jay Kaiser. I'll call tonight's meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. okay, this meeting is being held virtually and will re be recorded. At its conclusion, Mr. Lippincott will post the meeting on the Township's YouTube channel. A link to the meeting can be found on the Township's website at www.westrockhilltownship.org. I'd like to remind everyone that we are, will be following the West Rock Hill Township policies for public meetings and the rules that apply as listed on page two of the meeting agenda. Please silence cell phones and mute your computers until you wish to speak. Are there any public comments on the agenda items as listed? If so, please state your name and address. Hi, my name is Cliff Cole at Shoecraft Road. May I make a comment about the agenda? You may make a comment about the agenda. Anything else should be taken under public comment. I understand. I'm asking specifically if the agenda can be uh, amended to include the uh, win of the DEP ruling for the case that the uh, township had. We will leave the agenda as it is, but we will make sure that that is discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Announcements. The Board of Supervisors will be having an executive session following tonight's meeting to discuss legal and real estate matters. With that, we'll move on to the consent agenda which includes the May 19th, 2021 meeting minutes, the wind plan review status escrow release and vouchers, emergency services report, building zoning and building permit report, public works report, the planning commission report, I don't believe there was a meeting, and the treasurer's report, payment of bills. Mr. Lippincott, would you present the treasurer's report? Sure, I'll present the treasurer's report ending May 31st, 2021. The general fund, $985,512.47. Highway aid, $249,049.86. Open space, $1,112,947.92. The park fund, $28,298.49. The equipment fund, $32,492.86. Highway Capital, $129.64. The street light, $38,214.16. The reserve fund, $396,181.07. Manderfield Open Space, $51,377.48. cents. Sewage maintenance, $181,014.52. The stormwater funds, $7,320.84. And the escrow funds, $2,364,966.71. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? I have none. I'll make a motion to, uh, to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Miller. May I have a second? Uh, I will second that motion, yes. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved. Confirmed appointments. There are none, so we, move, we will move on to committee reports. We'll start with the park and recreation report, and I believe this evening Mrs. Clark is going to present that report. 
Yes, that's correct. Uh, Park and Rec, we met on Thursday, June the 10th, um, had a pretty short meeting. We only had a discussion about, um, we have a park bench request placement over at the park. And I believe you all have in your packet the little drawing of our park layout. The person who's requesting the bench is a baseball uh, affiliated person. So he wants to be back by the baseball field. And we've determined that back corner of the park would be a swell spot to put his new bench back there. So we haven't, um, it has, he's just submitted the, the form. So we're, we're at that spot right now with that. Um, we still have movie in the park that's coming up August the 21st. We're going to show Wonder Park. And as usual, the September Fest is moving along slowly. Couple little changes we might have to make this year. We are definitely planning on having food trucks instead of having people cook. Um, we're currently looking into that. And that's just about all we talked about. That's it. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? I have none. I, I have none. I want to make a comment regarding the bench, uh, the placement of the bench. As I, I attended the meeting and, and listened to the presentation that they had, and it seems like a suitable spot. Uh, if you folks, my two fellow supervisors, have, the, have had the opportunity to look at that. Um, I believe that they may be looking for um, approval forward with that. So I didn't know if, if you wanted to proceed forward with that, if you needed a, well, a motion or if, if somebody wanted to, to, to make a comment on it publicly. Well, Suzanne, are you looking forward, or, I'm sorry, are you looking for us to approve it tonight or are you still working on it? I don't believe we need approval. It's a person who's purchasing a bench and has requested that placement. So, you know, unless you guys have to approve where it's going to go, I mean, we've, we've looked at it and we've determined that's a good spot for that bench. So if you need to approve it, that I guess that's what we would need from you. Well, Greg's shaking his head. Yes. And, <laughs> and uh, I have yes, no problems yes. with it. And Jay, Jay vouched for the positioning. So okay. I'm okay with it. So if somebody wants to make a motion, I will make that motion and I'll second. Okay. We have a motion made and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you, Jay. So the uh, park bench will be placed. This this is the Rotary Club, correct? Or is it the Rotary? This is no, park? it's a fella from baseball has okay. requested the bench. I believe the Rotary is, is, is funding it, I believe, oh, right, Suzanne? I, I don't – oh, is that true? Okay, I really didn't see the application. I just knew it was somebody from baseball. I just know we're not paying for it. They're paying for it, and I don't care who pays for it, just as long as it gets paid for <laughs> I should mute while I laugh when Suzanne makes her comments. <laughs> in our okay. packet, it says sponsored by the Rotary in, in parentheses. If you guys Greg is saying that's packet. correct, Jay. Yep. Greg is saying okay. that's correct. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. Um, um, all those in, I, well, we have a, we have an approval of the bench. We need an approval of the park and rec report. So um, I would make a motion to approve the park and rec report. I'll second. Mr. Miller has seconded. All those in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The report for Park and Rec is approved. Uh, we will now move on to the Conservation Committee report. Um, Mr. Schweimeyer. Good evening. Um, our last Conservation Committee meeting was held virtually on May 22nd, or 20, 20th, I'm sorry, 2021. Uh, we had two major items we discussed. Um, Manderfield Preserve, Greg reported that Sink and Recovery Group cleared and blazed the overgrown trails. The dead ash trees near the trails were felled by West Davenport to make the trail safer. And Greg reported that a gate installed in a natural area by Heritage Conservancy, Conservancy is actually a, a deer shield. Uh, next item, the open space signs. I don't know if you've noticed uh, when we drive around, a few of them are damaged. Um, David Collingwood met with Horizon Signs owner uh, Kevin Price to discuss the cost of manu manufacturing new open space signs and ovals to replace the damaged signs. 
Uh, these signs were manufactured out of aluminum, which is more durable than the foam core inserts that we currently use. Uh, new signs, a total of five new signs to be ordered at a bulk discount of 525 each for a total of $2,625. And these will be uh, used for future open space acquisitions. Uh, in your packet, you have the more detailed description of the size of the signs. Open space ovals, uh, acreage ovals have not been added to most of the open space signs. I think a few of them do have them. Um, the Conservation Committee performed an audit of the existing signs to verify which signs have ovals and how many new ovals will be created. Um, two are needed for each sign. The price for approximately 56 vinyl acreage ovals is quoted at $560. Uh, damaged open space signs, signs that need replacement are three on the Zimba property, one on the Wildman property, and one on the Schaefer Preserve. Uh, replacement are priced at 375 each for a total of 1,875. Uh, these will uh, have new aluminum signs replacing the uh, foam core signs, so they're going to be a little more rugged. Uh, the cost, total cost for the above is $5,060. The Open Space Committee requests the board approval to spend up to $5,060 from the Open Space Funds. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schreimer. Uh, any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? I have none. I have none. Okay, so um, Michael, the um, we're, we have some damaged signs that are made out of styrofoam that we're going to replace with the new metal signs. So we're, gonna, we're going to purchase some new signs, and we usually do them five at a time to have them in in the township building. And when we conserve additional properties, we can place those signs and have them ready to go. And we're going to place acreage ovals on all the signs, one on either side, based on an audit that I believe was performed today. Um, so the amount which would come out of the um, open space fund would be not not would not exceed five thousand sixty dollars. So I would make a motion to approve that of money to be put towards these items i'll need a second to that motion if you approve i'll second it oh go ahead jay you wanted to i was going to second it, yes but okay. I, I did I, I will second that i want to ask a question and when we're done we're voting on it okay certainly you want to ask the question so, before um I, I, just uh for clarification for for the signs that we have now, the existing ones, what would that what would that cost would have been if we would have stuck with the same kind of uh, material? Do we know or not? We can we can figure that out if we go back and look at the invoices for the original signs. The original signs um, are not standing up well to the weather. They're not uh, standing up well to snow plows. Um, right. The, other, the newer signs, I believe, are actually cheaper than the original signs, and they're um, actually made of metal so I, I think they're gonna they're gonna be well they will if it's aluminum yes I, yeah. I, I do agree with that and I know that we have had some damage with uh, with dead trees too the ash trees have taken a toll on a lot of things so I'm, I'm fine with it so my, okay. my second motion stands okay. as is thank you so we have a motion we have a second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed great so the we the motion to uh, Approve the open space funds for those purchases is approved. We should have a motion now to approve the conservation committee report. Yeah, I'll make that motion. And I will second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The conservation committee report is approved. We can move on to commission reports now. We'll start with um, Chief Dickerson. Police report. Uh, good evening, supervisors. 
Um, so here's our May 2021 report. Um, obviously, I already see an error on the, the copy that I gave to Greg earlier in the week. So um, so uh, the Penners Regional Police Department responded to the seven. I think, actually, I have a different report here, Dave. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my fault. I didn't okay. update the power. You made me all, made me all nervous. No, this <laughs> is my fault. Testing me on my second meeting, huh? Um, so uh, the following information uh, re reflects uh, monthly activities for the Penners Regional Police Department from the month of May to, uh, 2021. Uh, the department responded to 950 calls for service. 441 of those calls were in East Rock Hill Township, and 509 of them were within West Rock Hill Township. Uh, the department handled 30 traffic crashes. Eight of those crashes were in, wet, were in East Rock Hill, and the other 22 were in West Rock Hill. 19 were reported were reportable crashes, excuse me, and 11 of them were non-reportable crashes. Um, we responded to four Part One crimes and 35 Part Two crimes in the month of May, totaling um, 39 total crimes. Uh, part one index crimes are your violent crimes, um, homicide, sexual assault, robbery. So we only responded to four of those. Um, the rest were mostly um, theft calls and um, frauds. Uh, if we look down below, West Rock Hill reported crimes was one theft, one domestic assault, um, a four fraud reports, one receiving stolen property, uh, one sex offense against a minor, one child abuse report, one DUI, disorderly conduct, Harassment, um, <clears throat> uh, two trespassing uh, calls, and an ordinance violation for fireworks, and two for dogs running at large. Uh, East Rock Hill reported crimes is two thefts, um, one assault, three frauds, one criminal mischief, one sex offense, a disorderly conduct, harassment, terroristic threats call, trespassing, and another fireworks, and two more dog law violations. <clears throat> uh, criminal charges filed for the month of May was one charge of simple assault, one charge of drug paraphernalia, uh, public drunkenness arrest. We had two charges of receiving stolen property, one unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, and one DUI arrest. Um, officers conducted 370 traffic enforcement details and 62 traffic details on Old Bethlehem Pike. Officers issued 61 traffic citations and 89 written warnings. Um, we also conducted 703 business checks in the month of May. So far for the year, um, we have 3,509 calls for service, 104 total traffic accidents, 140 yearly offenses, and we filed 40 criminal charges in so far in the year of 2021. I just want to take a moment and remind everybody on July 15th um, of 2021, we'll be hosting the Another blood drive at the uh, headquarters uh, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, you can register at 1-800-RED-CROSS and also online on their website. Um, I believe this is something we've done annually, and obviously last year with COVID, we didn't do it. But um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, with COVID and all those things, the, the blood banks are running low. So uh, hopefully we can get a lot of people out to uh, donate some blood. It's going to be on our social media, and uh, maybe I'll get some signs out to uh, Mr. Livingcott, you can hang him up in the in the um, lobby of the township building then as well. So that's the report for uh, June of 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? Uh, Greg, you will update the report to reflect the Chief's new version? Sure, yeah. I, think I can do that. All right. Thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Well, that being said, uh, we'll need a, may I have a motion to approve the police report? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. I will second it. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The police report is approved. Moving on to the next commission report, uh, Mr. Miller, Joint Rec Authority Report. Okay, the pool opened um, on Memorial Day weekend to a rainy day, so we, we were closed on our very first day. But uh, since then, we have been open. There was one other day we had to close. Uh, the pool, there's been no issues at all that we're aware of. Um, no one's complained, and that's always a treat. Um, the zip line is up and running, and I think as of today, there was like a line backed up of about 15 or 20 kids <laughs> waiting in line to use it. So it's been popular, that's good. Uh, from a financial perspective, 
uh, we've collected $58,025 in family memberships and our, our budget is, we're budgeted for 65,000. That's what we're hoping to reach. And it's very early in the season yet. So I'm very confident we're sitting at about 91% of hitting our budget already. Uh, within the next month, we will be, we should be well over that. Uh, we've also collected uh, $2,000 for swim lessons and we have a current balance right now of $49,700 uh, in the pool uh, funds. So really there's nothing else to report. Everything's running smooth and uh, just everybody's in swimming. We've had, we have two camps that have already started coming. We've gotten some phone calls from some other camps that might like to bring kids to. So that's it. Any leaks? Nothing I happened. haven't found a leak. I have not found a leak. Great. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors on the Joint Rec Authority Report? I'll make a motion to approve the report as presented. Thank you, and I will second that motion. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Joint Rec Report is approved. We'll move on to the Tax Collector's Report. Mrs. Clark. Okay, for the month of June, for annual taxes, I've collected $3,631.82, $187.15 in 2001 interim tax bills. Uh, no street light so far this month of June. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that county and township tax bills are due in face by the end of this month, June 30th. And after that, there is a 10% penalty that it's added to your real estate tax bill. And also look forward to the July 1st school tax bills will be issued. Should, hopefully will be in your mailbox or around your mailbox somewhere by the 1st of July. I know the school board setting their millage rates tonight. Um, so once we get the uh, confirmation of what the millage rates can be, we can print our tax bills. So we're all just standing and waiting for the school board to make their decision. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, are there any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? Suzanne, it's Jim. <clears throat> did you have any issues with mailing out in the your first set of taxes this year? Did, did every, everybody get their mailings on time? And They were kind of delayed. Um, I know personally, I didn't get my tax bill till about the maybe the 8th or 9th of March, which they should have been in your mailbox the 1st of March. Okay. But I know postage has just been a night nightmare yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. I talked to collectors today that were still getting mail from back in April. Today they were getting April mail. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. hopefully July will be better moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Clark. Any other comments on the uh, tax collector's report? If there are none, I would offer a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tax collector's report is approved. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. We'll move on to the engineer's report. Mr. Bala. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have a few items on the agenda tonight. Uh, first one being a Grandview Hospital flashing warning device. Just as a, as a little background, if you all recall, the new Grandview Hospital project is going to relocate the main entrance to the hospital. So right now, the main entrance to the hospital is lined up with the main entrance to Penn Foundation. So it makes a four-way intersection. And there's a crosswalk located at that intersection. The hospital side of that intersection is going to move a little bit south towards Sellersville to the other side of the new addition, but they're leaving the crosswalk at that existing location at Penn Foundation. That's Since it's true. no longer a four-way intersection, PennDOT is requiring installation of a flashing warning device for the crosswalk to ensure, you know, that's a safe crossing. Any flashing device is considered a traffic signal, requires a permit from PennDOT, the PennDOT permit requires the township to file an application and the application requires the township to pass a resolution authorizing Greg to sign the application. So what's on the agenda is the resolution to approve uh, the application for the, for the signal. All the costs and construction of the signal are being done by the hospital. 
And that'd be resolution, what number? 2021-5. Oh, five. Yes. Is that flashing, Mr. Bowler, is that flashing um, sign, is it is it solar powered or is it going to be run by? Um, <clears throat> they were going back and forth on that. I think in the end it's going to be hardwired. Okay. And it's going to be the new style of sign. It's not the old signs that looked like a school sign with the with the yellow light above and below it. Now it's a, a rapid flashing LED light. Uh, so it's the newest technology. Cool. So then as part of your report, uh, we need a motion to approve resolution 2021-05 this evening. Am I correct? Correct. Uh, I, can I, I have one more quick question. Um, yes. That's being requested by um, Grandview Hospital. Does Grandview Hospital pay all the monthly fees for that and everything, or do we? Um, um, normally, when it's a stormwater management um, <clears throat> facility or a utility other than a traffic signal, normally the um, the applicant, meaning Grandview Hospital, is responsible, but. I don't often see that in traffic signals, and I'll, I'll, and maybe Steve has a different experience, but it's more common in traffic signals for the municipality to take responsible for the, responsibility for the signal. Yeah, I, I agree with Mary, and, and in fact, PennDOT requires the township to be res responsible for the signal. Okay. All right. like a traffic light. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? If not, we'll look for a motion to approve uh, that resolution. I would make that motion to approve that resolution, Jay Kaiser. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. I will I'll second, second it. I'll, I'll second it. Okay, that's, that works. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Resolution is approved. We'll move on to the rest of the engineering report. Mr. Bala. Okay, so next we have the road bids. Uh, so we had two contracts out. Um, we'll go with the first one was for oil and chip or asphalt seal coat. Um, that contract only had one bid. It was from Asphalt Maintenance Solutions or AMS commonly referred to. Uh, it had a base bid of $37,980 with an alternate bid of $10,000, which was... Um, Ranch Road. Remember, we went back and forth on whether right. we were going to do anything down on Ranch Road. Uh, so that is up for your consideration of the base bid and or the base bid plus alternate. Is that the only issue you have with uh, paving bids this evening? No, we have a whole second uh, okay. bid for the overlay paving. Do you want me to so, go over that one too? So you do. Well, I, I just, my question was: Do you want to you want to you want to approve these separately, or you just want to do it as one one package? I would typically approve them separately. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll so, make a motion. I'd, I'd be happy to make a motion that we we accept the steel code bid summary for uh, uh, asphalt maintenance solutions LLC. I'll second Thank that. You. Thank you. So, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. I, Wall. I didn't get in there fast enough. Were you approving just the base bid or the base bid plus the alternate? Uh, I thought it was both. It's the, both. For me, it was base both. bid plus. Okay, yep. I just wanted to be clear. Thank you. And the the second paving bid was for uh, the overlay paving and some uh, stormwater repairs along uh, Lonely Road. Uh, we we're also paving Quarry Road, Lawn Avenue, Township Road. And that bid had an alternate uh, in it also for the parking lot at Heritage House. Uh, so we had three contractors who submitted a bid. Um, you can see on the list, uh, James D. Morrissey, Gorkon, and Bloom and Glenn contractors. So the low bidder for both the base bid and the alternate was um, uh, James D. Morrissey, the base bid of $421,170 with the alternate uh, adding $20,000 for a total of $441,170. So you're, you're saying then that the bids 
don't conform to what we had on our, in our budget, correct? They are over what uh, was originally budgeted, yes. By how much? Uh, I think the total package would be upwards of $100,000. Comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? Yeah. I have some, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please do. I'm, okay, thanks. Um, I think we should move forward with, uh, with the uh, uh, paving contracts that we have here. But I do have a question regarding the alternative bid of $20,000 for the Heritage House. Can I, may I ask why the taxpayers would be responsible to pay that when we lease that building to the um, Historical Society? The township is still responsible for the, all the parking facilities of the okay. James Memorial Park. Fair enough. Then, then, in my opinion, I think we should challenge the manager to find the money to do these paving projects because, uh, in, from my opinion, and I believe you two fellows will probably think the same way, the roads are very important for, this, for the uh, citizens of this township, and I believe this, this work needs to be done. But the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was going to ask Mr. Lippincott um, for his uh, opinion on um, the availability of finding that, that money. Is your pencil sharp? My pencil is very sharp. Okay. So the answer from you would be yes. Am I correct? Of course. We can get it done. Yeah. And, and I would agree with uh, moving forward with this, too. So get them all done. I, I am in total agreement with that. Um, so if there's no, no more um, comments or questions, I would look for a motion to approve the low bid in the alternate uh, with, in the, with the ex excess of upwards of $100,000. I'll make that motion. Thank you. And I will I'll second, second it. I, okay. I'll second. You second it up. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That is all I have, unless there's any questions. I have no questions. Uh, if I hearing none, I'll make a motion to approve the engineer's report. And I'll need a second. Oh, I'll second. I'll oh, Jay did. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kaiser. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Engineer's report is approved. We'll move on to the solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only item on the solicitor's report this evening was the approval resolution for the Slosser subdivision that you looked at last month. Um, the applicant let us know earlier this week that they were still reviewing um, some of the details associated with the subdivision and they asked if they could have addition, an additional month and hopefully they'll be back in front of you next month. So we'll just table this for a month. Is, is that would be appropriate, saying. yes. Okay. Any questions or comments from any other board members? I have not. Okay. Anything else, Mrs. Everly? I don't have anything else right now. Thank you. So we'll look for a motion to re approve the report as given uh, by the solicitor. Um, I'll make a motion. To approve I'll it. make a motion. We have one. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, now we're going to move on to the township manager's report. Uh, Mr. Lippincott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item is the community today, Penridge Community Day. It's the 49th annual celebration. Uh, there's an asking letter in your packet. Um, it will be held Sunday, July 11th in Lake Lenape Park. The rain date will be Sunday, July 18th. Um, it's open to everyone in the Penridge community, free to come. Um, it, would the board consider giving a donation to the community event? And my question mm -hmm. for you was, have we done this? What typically have we done this in the past? And if so, to what amount have we done this? We usually did about $100. That's been typically the average. 
but the board can decide whatever it would like to do. Comments from the board? I have one. Yes. Mr. Chairman, if I may. You may. Um, we, did, we did donate to this, I believe, two years ago. Last year we didn't do it because I don't think they had Community Day. Correct. I do, believe, I do believe we donated two years ago, and I do believe, if I recall correctly, that was $100. Am I correct in saying that, Greg? Yes. Okay. I would, I would, I would uh, support contributing that same amount this year to the uh, Penrose Community Day. I'm good with that. Mr. Miller? I'm sorry, I was on mute. I said, as would I, I agree. Okay, so all three of us agree. I don't know that we need, do we need, we don't need a motion for that if we're all agreeing, or do we? Not really, not for $100. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, continue, Mr. Lippincott. Uh, the second, you have a letter from the Penridge Community Center. Um, greetings from your Penridge Community Center. As you are aware, the center has been required to be closed during the pandemic, but has been able to maintain local Meals on Wheels program. The closure for our seniors have had negative financial effect. First, we've had a very limited opportunities to hold our traditional fundraisers and rentals. Second, we've had basic operational expenses, mortgage, utility bills, etc. Also, without income, we have been unable to improve our facility, such as painting and NADA bathroom upgrades. It has come to our attention that the federally approved American Rescue Plan allows municipalities to allot a portion of those funds to local nonprofits. Therefore, we respectfully request your consideration of doing so to hopefully help the funding void we are currently experiencing. Regards, uh, Margaret Levy, Manager, Penridge Community Center. Any comments or questions by the Board of Supervisors? We have not even received. We have not even received those funds yet, right? Correct. We have not received those funds, and you have until I think uh, 2026 to spend those funds. Right. Right. We uh, have 2024 to decide how we're going to spend them, and 2026 to actually spend them. And do we have direction yet, or or we we're going to get direction on what we can do legally and what we cannot do with that money? Correct. Sure, there has been some um, beginning phases of going through the program and trying to understand it, but this is a brand new federal program, so we're still getting through the details. It's it's brand new, so we're starting to get a handle of it, but we're not. We haven't perfected it yet. So, I, my personal opinion is we should take the request and we should table it until we understand better about the funding and, and you know, when it's coming what we're going to get and exactly what we can spend it on. That would be my opinion. I agree with that, but I, but we have to make sure that we don't forget about it. We, oh, we can, I agree. We can revisit this. It's important that we revisit it, but I, I agree in my opinion as well. We just don't have enough information to make any kind right. of a decision tonight. Mr. Kaiser, you agree? Yes, that was going to be my suggestion. Um, so you guys already said it very clearly. Okay. Um, Wait and see attitude, I believe. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Livingstock, next. next. The next item you have is a resignation letter from um, Betsy Branson. Um, Dear Greg, sorry for the late reply. Sadly, due to ankle and walking issues, I must resign from the Conservation Committee. Uh, when I have surgery later in June, I'll be unable to put any weight on the foot for six to eight weeks. Uh, I felt so honored and privileged to be a member of this amazing committee, which has had still so much work to do to save our environment and educate our community on what we have done. I also appreciate the talents and special gifts of each member. And thank you, Karina, for doing the wonderful minutes. I've investigated planning uh, before I moved here as a member of the Open Space Committee and Shade Tree Commission of Whitemore Township. Protecting the environment is so important for us and for the generations to come. I will miss the wonderful people and working with them. However, I know there is one man who has applied a few months ago and a wonderful person who attends every non-executive session in the meetings. Hopefully in six months, I'll be able to attend uh, the non-executive sessions. Again, thank you uh, to all of you, Betsy Branson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lippincott. I, I I've worked with Betsy on this committee and, and she's done an, an incredible job 
she's been a real asset to not only the committee but to the community and um we owe her a, a great deal of thanks uh for the work that she's done and i i guess we're going to mr lepicott you're going to be looking for for us as a board to approve well, to make a motion accepting her res uh, her resignation, okay. and then I need another one to authorize advertisement of the position. Okay, cool. Any other comments by members of the board? I have none. Okay, I, I have none other than saying I will I will make the motion that we accept her resignation and allow Greg to move forward with uh, advertising for another member. I will second that motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Lippincott, so the second thing is you need a motion to approve um, circulating a request for a, a new member, correct? I think Jay made that all in one motion. Oh, it was all in one motion, then we're- Yeah, Jay made it in one motion, so I'm okay. good. I missed that. We're done, then we can move forward. Anything else, Mr. Lippincott? That's all I have. Okay, um, we need a motion to uh, approve the township manager's report, which I will do. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Mr. Miller, thank you very much. All those in favor of approving the township manager's report, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to old business. And I know that there was a question at the very beginning of this meeting about the agenda items, whether it's old business, new business, or public comment. Um, we will be sure to address it. Um, old business. Did you want to address that question now? So I think it's appropriate since you're asking the question, you can help us on that. <laughs> um, yeah, yesterday um, the Commonwealth Court ruled in favor of, of Mr. Cole and his group of, of residents who banded together and, and also ruled in favor of the township on similar um, appeals from a determination by the Environmental Hearing Board that um, our appeal of the air quality permit could not be heard by the Environmental Hearing Board, that it had to be, um, that it was a, had to be heard in federal court. The Commonwealth Court ruled that no, the Environmental Hearing Board did indeed have the jurisdiction do hear that appeal and the matter was remanded to the Environmental Hearing Board for them to do just that. So um, that process will will now begin. I don't know what to say other than it wasn't it wasn't a, a very, very long decision. I won't go into the to the details except to say that the the um, you know, the court thought that that the Environmental Hearing Board aired when it felt the jurisdiction was vested only in federal courts. So it's a small victory for the township and Mr. Cole's group as well, right? That's correct. Thank you. It is not the end of like, any, it doesn't kill the compressor project at this point, um, but it, it, it does delay things for them because right now, until the appeal is resolved, they don't have an air quality permit from DEP. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Any comments uh, by the Board of Supervisors? No, I have none. I'm just happy to hear I it. Have, yeah. Yep. I feel the same way. Happy to hear it. Yeah. No comments. Great. Is there any other um, old business? Yeah, I have old business. <clears throat> um, Four weeks ago today, we turned on our solar array. And since then, uh, I just wanted to give you an update that we've received all of our approvals to move forward with, with having the system turned on. Um, we have uh, got approval to be connected to the PPNL grid. We have gotten approval and actually signed up with a broker to sell our uh, SREX online or, or solar energy renewable credits online. So everything's moving forward. Um, and I asked Greg, Greg has also created a website on our web page on our website. So I've asked Greg if he would show everyone that so they can follow it. 
in the in the spirit of transparency we wanted everyone to understand exactly what's going on and give you the option to watch it as it goes along so um if greg brings up and he's he's working on it now just brings up the home page we can work from that uh while he's doing that i want to tell you that um for us to um have covered 100 percent of our electric uh, we use about 84 megawatts a year so we would have to create seven megawatts per month on an average okay so greg if you scroll down you can see that as of today which there's two more days left in this month's cycle um we have created it's uh i don't see it on here greg it's at the top i think um it we have created uh, yeah, there it is 10.22 megawatts of electric so we are almost three and a half megawatts beyond what we would have to create. Now that's great because in the summer, that's when you do create all your electricity. And then in the winter, as the days get shorter, you use that extra electricity. So the way that'll work is when we pay our electric bill this coming month, uh, all of the credits will, will be applied and we should pay nothing except our connection fees. And then all the leftover energy, which is gonna be almost four megawatts, will get put in as a credit in our account. And then we'll get more credits next month and more credits the month after that. And by the time we get into winter, when the days get really short, we'll start using those credits to backfill and pay off our electric. So that's how it works that you will not have any electric bills, um, hopefully for the next 40 years. Uh, there's many pages on here. If you go to the West Rock Hill website and click on community, there's a tab for solar. And it, within there, it gives a brief explanation uh, and then it also has the link to this this website, which allows you to look at all kinds of things. Um, Greg, can you show um, the the array? Go keep going up and, and click now the other. Yeah, click on the layout. The layout shows. Oh, it's it's right on the left side there. Yeah, there. Now the layout shows all of the panels and the three inverters that they all go to. Um, you can see they're all green right or blue right now because they're starting to wind down for the day. But uh, if you click on that, uh, I think it's, uh, one of those things over there says, uh, you can see each panel and, and how much it's creating. And, and it shows that all the panels are working in unison because they're all uh, approximately the same amount of production. Um, one of those is the show playback up there. If you click on that show playback, Greg, which is right below the dashboard uh, thing. Yeah, right there. This is kind of cool. It shows you the electric and how it was generated today. And if you click it, it'll just flow through. And as it's going from 6 a.m. when it starts to gear up, you can see the panels lighting up. And then you can see where, you know, how it goes throughout the day with clouds and stuff. And that's, that's a typical pattern. So it's a good way to follow what's going on. You can get daily, weekly, monthly, and annual charts. Um, there's a lot of other things that if you would like even more detail, uh, Greg and I have administrative rights in here, so we can go in and actually re do reports on almost anything. We can, we can give uh, reports of uh, production on, on a panel and things like that. So it, it, we keep an eye on this, and uh, and as we move forward, if there's any problems, we can immediately report it, and um, back to uh, Exact Solar, and they've been wonderful to work with. So that's I just wanted to give you guys an update so you could see what's here. There's a lot here, so feel free to go in and look at it. Any questions? No, but I appreciate your uh, tutorial. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. That's all I had. Fine. Anyone else uh, with anything to say about uh, old business? I have none. All right. Thank you. We'll move on then uh, to new business. Um, Mr. Lippincott, in-person's meeting, uh, BOS and PC. Yeah, um, it's going to be up to the board. If you would like to go back into in-person meetings, that's a board decision. So for the Board of Supervisors and Planning Commission, so I need the board's direction of which way you would like to go. I would look for comments from the board. 
about where I'd, we are and where we may go. I'd like to make a comment if I may, Mr. Chairman. Please do. Okay, as everyone probably knows, I am in favor of, of public meetings. However, I do have some concerns uh, at this stage that we're in right now, and that is regarding our township employees. Everyone knows that we only have two full-time employees in the in the in the building, and if they were to get sick, we would have to close the building. So um, I think that we should plan and look for the opportunity to move back into um, public meetings. But I would like to say or give my opinion on, I think it's a little premature yet. Um, maybe we look and see what happens in the next two months and then make a decision to uh, on, on which way we want to go. That's how I feel right now. We have had public meetings with our park and rec, but we really don't have, we didn't have any public uh, uh, attendees other than the park and rec members. Um, I just wanted to add that so that the public is aware of that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I also would like to say something. Um, okay. I have, I, I have some concerns. Uh, I think we should be trying to get back to public meetings. I think everybody wants that. Um, but I, I also, um, would express some of the same concerns that, if people choose to come to a public meeting, that is their choice. Um, if we have a, if we as a board reinstate public meetings, we kind of tie the hands of um, our township staff and, and they're ending up in a meeting they may or may not want to be in. And if we risk the infection of the township staff and the closure of the building, then the taxpayers' needs for municipal services are not going to be met. And I think Mr. Lippincott has handled this extremely well over the last nine to 14 months. And the building, uh, the township building has been open. Most of the time, only one person has been in there, but he's, he, he's made it work. And as much as I wanna go back to public meetings, I, I don't know that there's any value added by having meetings in person because we're actually achieving all of our objectives without endangering anyone's health. And I think it's better to err on the side of safety. And with this Delta variant now out there, it's more infectious, it's significantly uh, more transmissible. Um, it's occurring in at least 34 states and it's 10% of all new cases. And if before we decide, and I, I, again, I, I wanna go back, but I think we should just kind of tread water here and go month to month and, and think about this. But another thing we need, need to do is talk about and decide about what the rules of engagement will be. Are we gonna require a mask or no mask? What are we gonna do as far as social distancing and how many people um, will, will be allowed in the building um, based on the social distancing criteria? And if we do go back, we still wanna have public comment via email for those people who do not wanna to come to the meeting. So. Those are just some of my concerns and, and thoughts. I wanted to put them out there. Okay, my turn. Um, you got I it. Agree. I agree. I agree. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back in the building too, but um, Jay made some very good points. And David, you you supported those those comments from Jay. And, and I, I agree with you. Um, we, can't, we can't have anything happen to our township staff, as Jay mentioned. And uh, I'm, you know, will, willing to wait like, you guys are and make sure it's a safe environment to go back to. Excellent. So I, I, I from the comments that we've made, I think the three of us are in agreement. Uh, we're probably all in the same place and, uh, and we all agree that we want to get back to a public meeting, but right now this is, this is the safest thing to do and, and probably the more, the more prudent thing to do. So does that also include the planning commission? It's whatever you decide as a group. Well, I, I mean, I, I see the same situation in the planning commission. We have our staff in there as well. And uh, I think the meetings are well, well representative, well represented uh, over video and the, and the people that are even on uh, audio on the meetings. So my, I think it's, it should be the same situation. Jay and 
David, what do you think? I agree, and I'll tell you why. Because, I mean, I know that the Planning Commission, um, their meetings generally don't generate a lot of public attendance. But if the first time they get an, a, an applicant that is one of those not in my backyard type of things, the place is going to be full. And I okay. think this is how we make we make that decision now to control it now and in the future until we feel confident, just as we do the the board of supervisors meeting. Yeah. So that's my feeling. I agree with Mr. Miller. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just add my comment there. Um, we are, res we as the supervisors are responsible for the decisions and the policies made. The planning commission is an advisory voluntary board mm -hmm. committee. So uh, in the, in the air of caution for the health, safety and welfare of our members, I think it is up to us when we decide to allow them to have public meetings as well as ourselves. So for right now, I would say no. We have virtual meetings and we do not have public meetings for them. Once again, we're I think we're all in agreement. Do we need do we need to vote on that or anything? Um actually, I don't believe you do need to vote on it because you're not changing the status quo. You'll need to vote when you change the status quo. Right now, you're under a self-declared declaration of emergency. Correct. And when you decide to go back to regular meetings, you will have to modify that, and that will take a, re a resolution. Oh. But you're not changing the status quo. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any uh, more new business? I had a question, if I may, Mr. Chairman. You may. Do do we do we need to discuss, uh, or is this something that's done afterwards? Uh, there was a, 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 a email or something to spend money to do an audit on 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 uh, the funds for uh, for the COVID relief. Do we need to act on that in any way? That question is to Greg. I guess. don't have to do that today. I got that email today. Um, I okay. haven't gone through it completely. It's a contract, okay. so I forwarded to the Board of Supervisors and, and Mary, just so you guys could review it. I do not expect the board to make a decision getting a couple of hours ago. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that uh, we were clear on that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to forget about it or not discuss it yeah. if it needed to be discussed. Thank you. That's important. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. Any more new business? Uh, just one, one thing. Um, we gave permission to our manager to uh, start and stop any emergency situation. Um, do we need to rethink how we want to move forward with that, um, make something more permanent, giving the manager responsibilities, or does anybody have anything to say about that? Specifically, I, he, he's charged, he's charged with, um, snow emergencies only. No emergencies, right. Yeah. Just snow emergencies. So I guess my question was, do we want to expand that for future in case, in case even, you know, if, when we do come back or when we don't come back or whatever, I mean, how much, how much do we want to give, put on our manager's shoulders? <laughs> Greg and well, I talked about that today. And when Act 15 was passed last April, it, it amended a lot of different ordinances or a lot of different statutes. One of them was the emergency management statute, statute the emergency management act. And it gave uh, municipalities to the ability to have um, virtual meetings during self-declared emergency situations. So as you go forward down the road in the event of a hurricane or a or a, a snowstorm or something like that, you may have your meetings virtually. It's not necessary to, to, to do that um, um, live. Uh, your policy now, you, you, you say that you give Greg the authority, but actually you don't give Greg the authority. Greg can declare a public um, emergency um, on a temporary basis, but you ratify it at your next meeting because a declaration of emergency is always a board action. Okay. Um, it's just that it, it, it's more practical when the snow's falling suddenly and heavily that you're not necessarily able to advertise 24 hours in advance, get together and have a meeting. So um, when, when you decide to go back to regular meetings and you adopt the 
resolution terminating the COVID public disaster emergency, then it would be a good time in that same resolution to wrap in all the other things that you're talking about tonight, like what happens for her, you know, for hurricanes and how to advertise your meetings next year so that if you decide to go virtual because of a different kind of emergency, you're able to do that and that's already advertised. And these are things that you've been talking to Greg about, I've been talking to Greg about, and but I, I think that the best time to make the decision is um, when you're ready to change the resolution that's currently in effect. Great, thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. Any other comments? Any other new business? Hearing none, we'll move on to public comment. Uh, please state your name and address. Hi, this is Cliff Cole at, on Shoecraft Road. All right, Mr. Cole, you have two and a half minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, first off, I'd very much like to thank the supervisors for granting access to the James Memorial Park to have our event uh, for the clean air picnic. Um, although we didn't get a really great uh, turnout like um, some people were fearing, um, it was a very successful event. Um, one of the things we did, we had about 30 people roughly. Um, one of the things that we did is we had cards for people to fill out that were self-addressed to FERC and we sent about 40 of them and they just started hitting the uh, docket today, as a matter of fact. Um, I'd also like to make, unrelated to anything along that line, I'd like to make a shout out to, uh, to Tony Bogner who was responsible for fixing all the leaks in the uh, community pool. Um, I don't know if you remember that. He was mentioned in a meeting, uh, you know, back in the winter, but he put his considerable talents and time and effort into that. And I believe that he deserves some um, uh, credits from the, um, from the supervisors and the township. Um, I'd also like to thank the solicitor for explaining the DEP's decision. Um, uh, it, and she eloquently expressed what uh, the, about the uh, environmental hearing board, um, and you know, and the DEP's decision. Uh, however, I do disagree with her that it was only a small win. We considered this an incredibly big win, um, and uh, because the ramifications of losing this particular hearing would have been great, our uh, the, our, our channels of appeal would have been much uh, more, I don't even want to go there. Uh, so anyways, and I'd like to thank again, the township for being uh, uh, part of that. We were actually teammates in it that our two lawyers worked against the Adelphia attorney in the hearing and the DEP. Um, I hate, it cringes me that I, I cringe when I think that the DEP was spending our taxpayers money fighting us. But um, anyways, be that as it may, um, it is true that the Compressor station still will go on, uh, you know, still has not been stopped. But um, as uh, the solicitor pointed out, they don't have their permit yet now. And um, we hope that the EAG, Two and a half minutes are up. Uh, may I have permission to speak for another minute? Half a minute. Okay. Um, and um, anyways, I'd also like to say that... Um, I'd like to just weigh in on the, uh, the meeting uh, issue, and that is to say that it has been really nice to be able to attend these meetings. I'm sure there are people that uh, would find it difficult to get to the meetings. Um, I would still attend in person if it was available, but uh, I'm hoping that the township can consider a virtual aspect to their meetings in the future when we do go live, um, you know, uh, anyways, I just hope you would consider that. Thank you very much. Are there any other uh, public comments? Any comments by the board? Hearing none, I will look for a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion. And a second. I'll second it. 
Thank you. And, and for everyone who has attended this evening, thank you very much for uh, being online. Uh, with that, uh, all those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you and good, good evening, folks.